Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here, just doing a quick video for you on how to wire up a receiver. Um, gonna go into depth though really quickly. Uh, you want to know the equipment that you're working with first. What are you all using? Are you going to be using a Wii, a VCR, something that needs low definition cabling? Or are you just going to be using a PS3, an Xbox, or a cable box that all has high definition output? So, first thing that we're going to go into is of course you have your speakers and everything all where you want them now we just need to run wiring you run wiring from your speakers uh, making sure that the ohms of the speakers match the ohms of the receiver basically the only time you really need to worry about this if you're trying to use a new receiver on a home theater in a box setup so say if you bought a Sony amplifier and speakers all together in one box and then you go and buy a Pioneer receiver um, you might not be able to work together with them just because of the ohms on the speakers. So make sure you do your research, talk to your sales guy when buying your receiver, and make sure he's all matching you up with the right equipment. So let's go to the back. I'm going to show you how to tidy up wiring and whatnot and how wiring all works now. So throughout the years, you used to have to plug everything into the TV. Now with smart TV and stuff, all you're going to be doing is one HDMI cable from there to the receiver and that's basically going to be on the back of a receiver that does HDMI switching. I highly re recommend doing this especially if you're hanging a TV on the wall because then you only have to bury one cable in the wall and it's a lot easier. Um, you might also want to bury one other one. If you're going to be using the smart features of your TV you're going to want to do an optical cable also to get sound back from the TV to your receiver. And also, if you are going to be using the smart features, you're going to want to do a Cat5 cable from here down to there if you have your uh, rotor and stuff right at your TV, or most of them come in with either Wi-Fi built in or a Wi-Fi dongle. Just plug that in, go through the setup on the TV, make sure you know your Wi-Fi name and password, blah, blah, blah. It's really easy with the TV. Um, so, let's go down here and I'll show you what I meant with the receiver. So this HDMI receiver does something called transcoding and 1080p up conversion. So it'll actually take a 1080i signal, a 480i signal, 480p, whatever you throw into it using the connections on the back and it will up convert it to 1080p. Now it doesn't look as good as watching 1080p but it does make it look a little bit better especially when you're trying to use a VCR. I only mainly have the uh, VCR here for when my niece is over or my cousin's kids so that way we can uh, throw on the old Disney tapes and whatnot. So another thing is is when you have you know when you're thinking about putting a home theater and stuff together you also want to make sure that you're throwing in a router near your home theater gear just because all this stuff needs firmware updates these days. When the uh, Dark Knight, the first one came out, almost all the old Blu-ray players needed a firmware update and a lot of people were kind of in a panic because no one knew how to do firmware updates. Well, now it's almost something I'd recommend everyone to do is make sure that you're buying stuff that's either Wi-Fi enabled, which Wi-Fi, if you're running Netflix, it's horrible, but you can do it. But if you're you know, just using it for the firmware updates, just buy a Wi-Fi Blu-ray player or Wi-Fi, anything, and just let it do the updates that way. So other than that, as you can see, we have our Xbox here. I've just run the cabling here and around, and then I've plugged it into there. Don't be too cautious about what inputs you plug them into. Most of these, you can label them now. So you can just label it, you know, DVD, Blu-ray, game system with me, since I've got the, it's actually an older receiver. It's a Pioneer 1125. I can actually change the input names and everything so I actually have them labeled Xbox, PS3, and uh, Telus TV and whatnot. So, go into that a little bit more now. So, once you've got this all plugged in like so, um, you can see there's the PS3 and you have your cabling from say your center channel, your left, and your right. So, we bring all our cabling down here, try and bundle it up. Most stands these days, if you're buying one, have them. This one's actually hand-built by my dad. So uh, we've actually put in our own ties for putting everything back here. It makes it a little bit cleaner. Um, now, if you're running 
audio systems like this and you're running a higher end receiver, I suggest banana clips. You can get them now. And what they are is actually I'll show you on this. that. What you can do is you buy them and uh, there's many different types. There's ones that you can solder, there's ones that actually clip onto the wire and then you put them together like this and then on the back of the speaker you can just push them in. If not, just use what it says on the back of the uh, speaker that you're plugging it into. Most speakers come with instructions. I know with home theater in a box is all you're going to be doing is clipping the wires in, and then usually there's a clip right here and you just plug it into the back. So just go into that a bit more. As you can see with optical it says that it's assignable. Uh, I suggest that you read your manual on assigning inputs once again because every amp is different and how to get in the menu could be different too. So just do a quick read up on that. If you're actually working with an older receiver, the way you're going to have to hook this up, you'll hook all your speakers up to here, you'll hook everything up to the TV, and then you can either try and run an opti optical cable back. You need to read in your manual once again, because some TVs, even though they have an optical cable output, they only do 2.1 out instead of 5.1. So all your 5.1 devices only get 2.1 if you don't read your manual. If it is like that and you read and you're like, oh crap, everything's 2.1, um, most things like the PS3, as you can see, have optical out, so just run opticals right to your receiver. And there's also what I say, how you have these white RCA ports, there's also black ones right here. And those are digital coax. So if you've got like a cable box or some devices, like Blu ray players, they'll have either the black one or an orange colored RCA on the back, and that will actually give you 5.1 sound out of that. RCA so it'll just be a single RCA from there to say your cable or box or your whatever you're using otherwise it's optical but the best way to wire is everything goes to the receiver and then one cable goes there um, other thing is is on all your devices you're gonna have things that they're basically HDMI control devices there's stuff like any net and other stuff you're gonna want to turn that off if not when you switch inputs on your receiver it might trans code differently and it'll take the signal and it'll do some wacky stuff. Basically, your Blu ray player might not want to turn on, it'll only show green color and stuff like that, all because you didn't turn any net off. And if you're just plugging devices into the TV and you leave any net off, or on, sorry, um, it will actually say when you switch inputs, it'll turn on the Blu ray. And when you switch inputs again, it'll turn it off. Problem is, you want to quickly take a look at. Uh, the hockey score and you're watching a movie so you pause it and you switch well the problem is it turns off your blu-ray so then you have to go and you have to scene select all the way back to that scene can be you know really annoying I highly suggest turning off all HDMI control on all your devices it causes more of a headache than actually helping you so once again find out what you want to hook up also to your network because um, you're you only have four ports on the back. I highly suggest if you want to run Netflix, PS3s do it very well. Don't use the TV. Their processors are all right, but I still don't recommend going straight from the TV. I would recommend going from, say, there or a Blu-ray player that you're buying. Um, yeah, so just choose something like that. Once again, if it has an Ethernet port on the back, I highly suggest trying to plug it into a router or if it has Wi-Fi capability, connecting it just so you can do those firmware updates. Um, so just taking a look at the uh, back of the receiver here, just make sure when you're plugging things in, you're actually reading your input. So, so right now you'll see that I actually am using the surround back on the back of this um, receiver. And the reason why is because I have these speakers biamped. Once again, if you have big tower speakers and you want to biamp them, do your reading up in your manual. It'll tell you how to do it. It's cool if it's available because it sends more power to your uh, speaker because this receiver, for instance, is 120 watts per channel. And if I do that, then it's 120 watts to the top and 120 watts to the bottom rather than just having 120 watts to power the entire speaker. Um, for rears, I wouldn't suggest it. I would just, you know, if you can biamp your rears, eh, not a big deal. You can also sometimes biamp your center channel, up to you. Just make sure you're paying attention to the RMS of your speakers and your amplifier. So you're not overpowering and you're not underpowering. Alright? Um, other than that, 
we'll just go into quickly once again as you can see they're all banana connectors if not um, all you're gonna do is put the wire in there and then you're gonna screw it down make sure you don't have copper hanging out on both ends you don't want anything to touch metal and short out on you other than that the rest is all in the settings uh, once you have everything plugged in from there it's all through the amplifier manual because you're going to pull out your manual open it up and read it on how to assign inputs so I hope this video helped you out if you have any questions at all feel free to uh, leave it in the YouTube comment and I will actually try and help you the best I can I do this a lot so it's really easy for me to help you out on different receivers alright other than that if you uh, want also check out the other videos I have on this channel some of them might help you out and teach you something new alright have a good one bye